Let's talk Quake Champions, but before we do let me preface this by adding a little bit of my FPS history and Quake history especially into the conversation. My first experience with the game was on Sega's short-lived Dreamcast console. Back in 1999, smartphones were 7 years away and the primary way to access the internet was still a clunky desktop PC. I didn't have a PC at home and the Dreamcast with its 56k modem, web browser and Windows CE capabilities was a great low cost way to access the internet and check emails. So unlike a lot of other takes on the game, mine is coming from the perspective of a Dreamcast gamer and not the original PC game. One of the sector's big players is Sega Dreamcast. Mike shows us how it is hoping to blunt the heavily promoted launch this fall of Sony's PlayStation 2. The holiday season of 2000 was a crazy one. Sega was scrambling to gain market share before the impending release of the PS2 later that year and in the final half of the year Sega brought out all of its big guns. It seemed like a great game was launching every month. The console had seen many great AAA games throughout the year including seminal hits like Crazy Taxi, Echo the Dolphin, Skies of Arcadia and Grandia 2. Sega's online network was launching that year and early in the year they had released Choo Choo Rocket, a great game in its own right but a teaser for what was to follow later. By the time the PS2 launched in October of that year, Sega had made it very hard to ignore the Dreamcast. Bob, what a quick spin move that stopped the defense cold, then he got his shot. You can't coach that, that's talent. <clears throat> They're inside. Oh, yeah! LeBron gets the jumper. In the months leading up to the Christmas season of 2000, Sega would release a series of games designed to show off its brand new online network and set the stage for Fantasy Star Online in what would become the first console MMO and the crown jewel of the SegaNet network. By Christmas, every Dreamcast owner was enjoying the first online playable titles ever seen on a console. And not just simple games like Sega Swirl and Choo Choo Rocket. There was a lot of initial speculation on whether the Dreamcast could handle online gaming over its 56k modem. But the dream was realized and we had full on online multiplayer in basketball and football, space sim combat, off road racing, and of course, Quake 3 Arena. For the first time ever, console gamers would experience the thrill of online multiplayer FPS gameplay. I remember staying up long nights mastering the controls and fragging in the arenas until morning. The port itself wasn't too shabby, it was done by Raster Productions, they handled the excellent port of Quake 2 to the N64 the previous year. The game played shockingly well over 56k, a testament to the original coding by John Carmack, and it came with a whopping 32 maps. A few months later they opened up the Dreamcast service to PC players as well, and a new influx of players was available which kept the game alive for many more months to come. Sega would follow up early the next year with Unreal Tournament, another popular arena style shooter which I also sank many hours into. But the shooter landscape was slowly changing, spurred on by Counter-Strike and then eventually Call of Duty and Battlefield, shooters were becoming more realistic and team or objective based. The days of superhumans running around the arena at breakneck speeds, fragging anything that moves, were being replaced by slower, more calculated games, based around not exposing yourself too much and choosing your fights. This was partially helped by the fact that FPS games were having to adapt to slower, less precise console controllers. Quake would return as a free-to-play browser game called Quake Live in 2010. It was largely based around Quake 3 Arena with a few minor gameplay changes. This was great for a while, but this certainly didn't put a dent in the populations of the likes of Call of Duty or Battlefield. In 2015, Bethesda announced Quake Live would be moving exclusively to Steam, and much to the dismay of the community, they introduced a $10 cost to buy the game when it previously had been free. The problem is the market got saturated with these types of shooters and people got burned out. There was and still is a new Call of Duty game every year and Battlefield gets a new version almost as often. CSGO became the esports darling and shot to the top of Twitch viewership. And then who can ignore the elephant in the room? An elite international task force charged with ending the war 
and restoring liberty to all nations. Overwatch. Some attempts have been made to revive the genre with mostly dismal results. Stuff like Reflex, Strafe, Shoot Mania, and Toxic have all come and gone to mostly forgettable status. And then at E3 of 2016, this happens. As a co-designer of the original game, I'm extremely proud and excited to be standing here today to announce the next chapter of this great game, Quake Champions. So now we have Quake Champions, a game that feels very much like Quake, but also has a few ideas lifted from more modern games. Everything you remember about Quake is intact, the blistering speed, the pinpoint accuracy, and even the game mechanic of strafe jumping and rocket jumps are a game. It also has a loot box system and so-called hero shooter mechanics. I hesitate to call it a hero shooter, but it does have an assortment of characters, each with different special abilities they can use. The character's background story development is minimal. Most of them are from older Quake titles and a short paragraph beside each character of the selection screen is all you get. Same goes for the special abilities. Even though they are unique to each character, there's no way to synergize abilities or use them in a coordinated way like in that other game. When you're in the arenas, everyone seems like they're on the same playing field and there's no mismatches like, say, Mercy trying to kill a Roadhog. Matter of fact, the abilities have little to no impact on the game at all, as most of them are designed on giving the player alone a slight advantage within that time window, either defensive or offensive. The skill ceiling on the game is still as high as ever, and newcomers will have a difficult time at first and will have to learn new skills they may be unfamiliar with, coming from Battlefield or other slower paced shooters. Unfortunately, the current beta as it stands today at version 12.4 contains no tutorials or any hints for a new player. And to make matters worse, there's a large influx of professional players and competitive gamers currently on the servers due to the announcement of the $1 million prize pool, Quake World Championships. Despite all of this, I'm still having fun with the game. The speed is so refreshing. There's no cover to hide behind, and when you come across an enemy in battle, it's always frantic. Taking the quad damage and going on a killing spree, that never gets old. And the current 12.4 beta build that I'm playing right now contains four modes to play. Deathmatch, TDM, Duel, and a new mode called Sacrifice that I can best describe as One Flag CTF. Out of all these modes, I find myself gravitating the most towards Deathmatch. It's the easiest one to get into and the one I always uh, queue up for. I haven't spent much time with any of the other modes. At this point in the beta though, the servers are not that populated and off-peak hours have seen wait times of up to 20 minutes trying to get a game. But it's still in beta and I expect a healthy population on launch once the Bethesda hype machine gets rolling. The game is planned to be released in a free-to-play format with microtransactions or you can also pay the standard $60 fee and have all the champions unlocked up front. Having played the beta for a few months now, I can safely say that the free to play option is entirely viable as you can even sometimes find the other champions in rare loot boxes. These you can earn by spending favor which is sort of the end game currency they're using. And the standard free guy that you get ranger is an all around good champion to start with. He's got a decent health and armor pool, a powerful special ability, and among the fastest champions in the game he's also matching Nyx and Anarchy for speed. All of the unlocks are cosmetic with no items giving any combat advantage. It's a standard loot box stuff from what we've seen in other games. There's also a level system that's really nothing but a measure in how long you've played the game. The game isn't without its flaws right now. There are netcode issues and problems with direct projectile hits not being registered, but hit scan weapons seem to be fine. These are things that will eventually get patched out. Bethesda is committed to a heavy esports focus with this game and has already been hard at work with balancing and even made a sweeping overhaul to one champion already. The main thing here is that the fundamentals are there. The game feels like Quake. Strafe jumping around the arena at top speeds with a tight field of vision induces a sort of bloodthirsty tunnel vision that feels the same as it ever did. Only now you're rewarded constantly with even more arcade style pop-ups whenever you do something amazing. And these little achievements count toward you earning favor which you can then spend on loot boxes. It's like a sort of instant gratification treadmill that makes you want to play another match. So there you have it, it's a great game, it's Quake, go play the beta, it costs absolutely nothing to try. And if you're from a generation raised on Call of Duty and Overwatch, who knows, this might be a refreshing change from what you're used to.